Hello. In this video, we're going to look on a Terrigen 4. So we'll go through every step, which is was quite a bit overdue to update from beginning interface and through all functionality as we're going along. And if you don't have a Terrigen 4, you can go ahead on a planet.co.uk and download it free version or you can purchase. Terrigen, it's a great application for 3D artists who want to start creating environmental art. Um, landscapes, atmospheric effect and other things is great. And you can use it, this application to create 3D animations, stills or export and using in um, gaming uh, applications, Unreal or Unity. So let's look what versions we provide. How I said before, the best parts is have it one version is free, which is provide you almost full functionality you needed to start creating. And when you start going advanced, you can always upgrade. So the biggest difference I want to point out, it is a uh, resolution a scale size. So you notice the free one have it 1280 by 90, the creative 5000 by 5000 and professional unlimited. You also cannot have it output animations on the free version. So it's only stills you can create it, but you can create um, HD resolutions for the creative and unlimited resolution with your professional version. So this is kind of keep in mind. So if you want to decide you want to create some animations in this environment, then you'll need it actually purchase. Speak about purchasing that I do like the pricing nicely how it's done here. And I wish many other software companies will do this because if you notice, you can buy monthly payment or you can buy outright and just use the application as long as you need it. So this is good options to provide it. By the way, right now on time recording, you can see it's have a little bit sales going, I think closer to the Christmas. So overall, the, some other different options, it is it's like 3D blurring enable, um, some open VDB import and so on. Some small, you can go to this side of the product comparison and just check by yourself if those options that you needed, which versions is included. In this videos, I'm going to use the Terrigen 4 professional version so we can look through all of the functionality. However, if you notice some of this functionality not available in your version, just keep this in mind. You can go back to this comparison and see if the just version you have it does not include it. Okay, and let's go ahead and start with the interface of application. I'm using Terrigen 4 and you'll notice right here it is build 4.6.31, the latest one. And of course, I'm using on a 16 core process for the faster render and my video card is RTX 3090. Just general information for you. I do also have a 64 gigabyte RAM, but majority we won't even need it for this. Okay, let's look on the interface first what we have it. And it's very similar to other applications. We have a drop down menu on the top. Below, we have a kind of button slash tabs that will work with our workflow, what we're working on, and I'll explain in a second. Below, we have a main big window. This is our preview window. You can just keep in mind, you can change all the position, everything. But in our videos, I'm going to use the default presetting just so you don't get confused, you know what I mean? Because if you customize, but if you customize before and you're familiar is okay, but you always can reset to default settings so you can follow along with these videos. Okay, right here we have our main preview and we can rotate preview from view and keep it in mind when we change our view, it does not change our render camera. We are need going inside the copy and copy the position to render camera. This is, will be one of the kind of questions come up when people work on this because it says, hey, I look through this, but my render is showing different. Remember, it's not necessarily what you see here. It's representing your render camera. But this is our work view and we can change this work view later if we want to display atmosphere, shaders or other elements. On our left side, we have it um, assets management area. And what I was meaning by this, it could be objects, 
could be shaders, could be atmospheric elements. It's just related to what workflow we have it on the top. By the way, all of these options, everything, you can easily access from drop down menu. And this is just more like shorthand, easy to access. Notice right here we're in terrain and we have fractal terrain and the fractal shader by default. If we switch to the shader options, then you notice we have only one shader right now and it's changed also in the assets library that we have it. So it's mean this left portion of window will change on depend what element or way you're working on. So let's go back to our terrain. Be just below this, we have it properly for selected elements. So example, if I'm going to click on a fractal terrain, you'll notice right here it's changed properties for the fractal terrain. If I switch to fractal terrain shader, it's a change to specific this option. The properties can be accessed also as a floating window, which we'll look a little bit later. So it gives you options to open all different properties at the same time, which is very powerful. Now, just between them, we have a little bit preview window right here. And this is preview window helps sometimes top eye view position of the camera related to different object. It's a kind of nice little tool you can disable if you don't like it, but we'll keep it as a default. And below right here, it is our node window. So let me increase in size and it's easy. You can see I just click and drag and drop so I can resize it. And what is meaning by node? You'll notice right here some blocks and they're connecting between them. If you're not familiar with a node system, at the beginning, this can be a little bit frustration and scary. Okay. However, when you understand how simple and easy it's work, it's become your greatest tool. Let's put this way. The Terragen from beginning was using node system, which is stand out from other applications. And node system is so well functional and a good representative approach to the elements that is right now almost every application using node based system. So let's put this way. How does it work? And you can see arrow representing it's flowing from top to bottom. And this lines is connecting. So it's meaning the element on the top like this one. Simple shader. You see arrow going down. So it's mean it's provides some information of flowing down to fractal terrain. However, information does not flowing back up to simple shape share. So it's just only going connection in a way it's going. It is not bi-directional. And you can notice as they're going down, down elements and they're connecting to specific output. We'll look a little bit more and explain, but overall keep in mind this all different nodes and all of these nodes not representing a dip because you have a different type of the nodes that you can go more close in. Um, and I understand it may be a little bit confusing. However, if we take one simple step at a time, trust me, you will understand and you will love this system. On the left side, you can see right here, we have an atmospheric camera. This is orientated to this object. The, they are not functional like terrain, this element box. It's more as a grouping together. It does not affect functionality of this nodes element inside. It just kind of help us keeping together. In a case, if we want it, we can click terrain and just focus to specific. You can always take the elements from the area and move in some other elements if you wish, and you can select right here. However, this is more as organizational coloring and elements. And I will kind of recommend keep it this way because it's make much easier. So if you have a question about your lighting, you can go focus directly and work with exactly this element. So remember before I said about this properties and I says about the access floating window. If we're going inside the lighting, you notice right here, we have it environmental lighting. We also have it this access as a tab. I can right click and select the settings. And as I click settings, it's open and floating window. Notice we remove the um, properties on our bottom left window. Now it's a floating window. The nice things about this, if you click on stay open, you can actually open multiple windows. And this has allowed you to work on the multiple properties at the same time. The also nice things about this is windows is not docking. So I can take them and take full advantage of multi-screen setup. So if you have more than one display 
on your workstation, you can take a lot of properties, put it on one screen, leave them open and work to workflow on another element. So that is actually a very big benefit of this. Okay, let's go ahead and close this window. And now again, if we click back, you can see right here, properties reappear. So overall, this is kind of um, access properties will look a little bit closer as we start working through our object to range shaders to all those properties, as well, how the preview work with inside our properties, what does that all mean? We'll go on back to this as we continue working on target. So here's a kind of very fast overview of the our environment. The one thing before closing, what I want to mention, it is mouse selection. Notice right here in main window, if I left click, they actually allowed me only selection. So left click allowed me selection inside. Middle button click allowed me to pan around. Well, actually a rotate, sorry, around the point, the selection. Okay. And a right click, okay, bring the menu. If you needed to um, move around, you can need press the Alt or Option key and right mouse button. For example, Alt click and a left mouse button. I can same, just turn around kind of, okay. If I have it my Alt or Option and a right key, this has allowed me to pan around with my camera. Middle button and hold down Alt key allowed me to zoom in and out. Also, if you scroll wheel, it will work as well that way. Okay, right there. Let me readjust. Okay, and a scroll wheel will work also zoom in and out, but with less um, movement. So this is general mouse navigation. We also look on a little bit more as we go and work with different navigational, but this is when we look specifically on our view window or workspace window. Thank you for watching. Be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click like notifications so it gives you information. The general so you'll know when new videos will be released. Just keep you informed. And keep it in mind, all of these videos will be part of the playlist of the new Terrigen tutorials. And it's very nice for you to just bookmark or like that playlist so you can always reference to videos that it's kind of in same collection. Thank you again for watching and have a great time.